Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. This is part three of our TP-Link Amada full setup. In this video, we're gonna be creating wireless networks inside TP-Link Amada, and I'll also show you how to create a simple guest portal. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to join our Discord server, I'll put a link in the description below. First, let's take a quick overview of what we're using. So currently we're just working within this main site. So our router is a TLR605, and then we have a switch, which is the TLSG2008P, which has four PoE ports on it. For the controller, we're using the OC200, and then the access point is the EAP660 Wi-Fi 6 AP. In the last video, we created our VLANs and our network. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that video. So the Wi-Fi networks, we need to create are one for staff and then one for guests. So let's head over to my network controller. To create a wireless network, all we need to do is go to the settings wheel and then click on wireless networks. Currently we have no wireless networks and we're gonna create a new wireless network. This new wireless network SSID will be called staff and we're gonna broadcast on the 2.4 and the five gigahertz band. We're not gonna enable the guest network and then we're gonna have security as WPA personal. We'll put in a security key. You wanna make sure this is strong, but for this video, we'll do it test one, two, three, four. And then we need to click on the advanced setting. We need to enable a VLAN so that when we connect to the staff network, we're connecting to the 192.168.20 network. If we look back at my diagram, that's the subnet that we gave our staff and it's on VLAN 20. So if we check off enable VLAN, we need to put the VLAN tag of 20 and then we'll leave all the other advanced settings at default. You could do a WLAN schedule if you'd like to say when you want to have the staff Wi-Fi network turned on or when you have it turned off. We're not going to do that in this video. You could also rate limit the Wi-Fi SSID, but we'll do that on our guest. So for this one, we're completed. So we'll press apply. Now our staff wireless network has been completed. We'll create our guest network. So create new wireless network. We'll call it guest. We'll have them broadcast on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and then we're going to enable this guest network. With guest network enabled, guest network will block clients from reaching any private IP subnet. So that's great. We'll also do the security of WPA personal and put in test one, two, three, four. And our VLAN ID for this subnet will be 192.168.30.1. So we're in VLAN 30. So we'll check off the enable the VLAN and then put in 30. Before our guests, we want to rate limit them. We could see there's a rate limit here with a default profile. There's nothing set up in the default profile. So we'll click on the drop down menu and then we'll create a new rate limit profile. I'll call this guest. And then we're going to enable the download and upload. I'll give the guest network 10 megabits per second download and we'll give them two megabits per second upload and then press apply. Now we need to apply the changes that we've made. And now both of our Wi-Fi SSIDs are done. We can see under the guest network that it's checked off for our guest. We have portal, portal name, access control, rate limit, which is checked off as well. And we can see our VLAN. Now let's say you want a portal for your guest Wi-Fi SSID. All we would have to do is go to authentication and then portal. We would create a new portal and I'll give it a name of guest. You need to make sure that your controller is always online for this portal to work and we'll check the portal on. We could select the SSID and network. We'll hit the drop down menu and then we'll select our guest. So there's a few different authentication types that we could have. We could have it wide open. We could have simple password, hotspot, external radius server, external portal server, and Facebook. We're just going to do the simple password, but we will go through all of these options in another video. I'll put the simple password at test1234 and then the authentication timeout will be eight hours. We could redirect using HTTPS. We could specify a different landing page if we have a promotional URL and you could customize what your portal looks like. Right now we'll leave it at the default. It will just show TP link and then we'll be prompted for a password. I'll scroll to the bottom and we'll press apply. If you're using a guest portal with a password, we're gonna wanna modify the wireless network for the guest. So we'll go back to our guest network and we'll hit the edit pencil and then we'll have no security type because the guest portal is taking care of the authentication. We'll press none and then apply. Now let's connect to the guest Wi-Fi SSID. 
Now we can see it's redirected us to that TP-Link captive portal. We'll put in the password of test1234 and we should get internet access. Now it's redirected us to another website. Let's try to ping google.ca and we have internet access. So that's how easy it is to set up a guest portal. Also, if we tagged one of our physical ports with the guest network, it would also redirect us to the guest portal. That's great if you need to have some network jacks on the guest network. But that's it for creating wireless networks within TP-Link Amata. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.